In this physics example problem, we drop a ball that's not perfectly elastic, it's just partially elastic, mass of 0.22 kilograms, it's dropped from a height of 4 meters, and the ball rebounds up to a height of 2.5 meters, and we're uh, told in this problem that the ball is in contact with the floor for 0.08 seconds, uh, so that's the length of the collision. We want to know what the average force is of the floor on the ball. So draw a little picture of this and then some notations off to the right, but four meter height we drop down and interested in the collision going on. So at the start of the collision we'll determine a velocity and after the collision we'll determine a velocity that allows that ball to achieve a certain height. Uh, the way we'll calculate the average force the first way, there's going to be two ways in this problem I calculate average force. The first way will be the mass times the acceleration, average acceleration on the ball. And I'll find that average acceleration by using this V final is produced by V initial plus the acceleration multiplied by the uh, time of contact at delta T. So moving down we have a ball starting four meters above the floor. It has a potential energy. Just at the instant before contact with the floor occurs, the ball will have kinetic energy. We will have converted all the potential energy into kinetic energy. So mgh equals one-half mv squared. I'm using an energy method to uh, find this, this velocity. That's not the only way you could find the velocity. You could use the kinematic equations and you get the same result. Um, so we have uh, the calculation going forward, multiply both sides by 2 times 9.8 times the 4 meter drop height gives us the square of the velocity. You ought to pause your calculator and see if you get 8.85 meters per second. Why have I attached a minus sign to that number? Uh, just the, working this out will give you 8.85. Why did I put a minus sign? It's very important to pay attention to which direction is positive and which direction is negative in a problem. I'm choosing to work this up as the positive direction. Um, so our h here, that was four meters above the floor, a positive number. Um, looking at the physical thing, what's going on, the ball is moving down, that's in the negative direction, so I attach a negative sign. Now the ball rebounds and starts moving up again, uh, it achieves a certain potential energy at the maximum height due to the supply of kinetic energy at the start of its moving up. We're ignoring air resistance, uh, but uh, we again can uh, equate the two energies. And doing this, multiply by 2 times 9.8, we now go up 2.5 meters, and I find that as the ball left to the floor, as the ball left the floor, its uh, velocity was plus seven meters per second. Well, we come back to our kinematic equation here, V final equals V initial plus AT, and we now have the numbers to insert into there. Again, being careful to remember that the at the start of the collision with the floor, the velocity was a negative number. So I put that in there. Add that 8.85 to both sides, divide by 0.08, I came up with 198.1 meters per second squared. Again, recommend that you uh, pull out your calculator, pause the video, and uh, check that out. Our force then is the mass of the ball, 0.22 kilograms times this average acceleration, and 198.1 meters per second squared. I am, you know, finding an average force using an average acceleration. Uh, the acceleration in detail is going to be changing. As the ball just initially hits the floor, it'll be compressed just a little bit, but as it uh, compresses to a maximum, the acceleration goes up higher. So this, the uh, average force, the average acceleration, those are for the whole collision time, not for any one instant, not for an instant. Okay, I get an average force then of 43.6 newtons. What's the second method we could use to solve this problem? Well, if we were given these velocity numbers, we're not, what's the uh, way we could solve the problem during that collision, find the force? Well, we've had a change in the momentum of the ball. So I can use a Newton's original second law 
that the average force is the change in momentum divided by the time involved. And we have 0.227 meters per second. That's our final momentum. There's always a minus when we use a delta. So minus 0.22 times the uh, velocity at the start of the collision was minus 0.885. The initial momentum is a negative number. But we're subtracting, so these two negative signs will cancel each other's effect. Divide by the 0.8, we get the same value, 43.6 newtons. Then a question, is the value of the mechanical energy conserved from before the collision to after the collision? Well, you would take note that the mass is unchanged, g is a constant, but the h numbers are different. We started at 4 meters, we only go back up to 2.5 meters, so at these two heights, the kinetic energy is zero. Uh, it's all potential energy, and they're not equal. So, no. There is a loss of energy in this uh, inelastic collision with the floor. And again, if you'd like some more, uh, watch some more physics videos and short lectures, you can go to my website, physics.gpclements.com. Nothing for sale at this website, just a list of uh, YouTube videos that uh, you might care to watch. If you like some, please subscribe to my channel.